to sit in a relaxed way with your back comfortably straight. Your hands in your lap, right hand on top of the left hand, and your eyes closed. Now focus on your breath. Know when the breath is coming in, know when the breath is going out. All the way in, all the way out. If you want, you can use a meditation word to go along with the breath, like in, all the way in, and out, all the way out, to keep reminding yourself that this is where you want to be. As for other thoughts, you can let them go. A thought comes into your mind, just let it go out. You don't have to get engaged with it. You don't have to chase it away. It'll go away on its own if you don't pay it any attention. Although if you find yourself getting snagged by another thought, as soon as you realize that, just drop it and come back to the breath. And try to notice what kind of breathing feels good. This helps get you interested in the present moment. Does long breathing feel good? Try it for a while and see. If it feels good, stick with it. If it doesn't, you can change. You can try shorter breathing, deeper, more shallow, faster, slower, heavier, lighter. Experiment to see what rhythm and texture breathing feels best. And think of the breathing as a whole body process. Every part of your nervous system is involved in the process of bringing the breath in and letting it go out. So make a survey of how your body feels as you breathe in, how it feels as you breathe out. If you find yourself tensing up anywhere, allow it to relax. Or if as you breathe out you find yourself holding on to any tension, allow that to relax too. Because the breathing process is not just air coming in and out of the lungs, it's an energy flow throughout the body that brings the air in and allows it out. So allow your awareness to be grounded right here in the body, right here, right now, as you breathe in, as you breathe out. This is a useful skill to develop. The more skills you develop, the more ha kinds of happiness you can find in life. It's good to have a wide variety of skills. As you think about most of the ways we find happiness, and they depend on the body's being healthy, your mind's being sharp, all your senses being clear. And they don't always stay that way. As in the chant just now, the Buddha noticed that the form of the body changes. It doesn't lie totally under your control. The mind changes and doesn't lie totally under your control either. But they do lie to some extent under your control. And that's how we use them to find happiness. And it's important to have some skills that you can depend on even when the body is sick, even when the mind is unclear. You can still focus on the breath. You can know when the breath is coming in, you can know when it's going out, and you know whether it's comfortable or not. So this is a useful skill to be able to develop. Now where you're healthy and strong. in preparation for the time when you may not be so healthy, you may not be so strong. The Buddha has us look very carefully on where we find our happiness and what true happiness means.
on the one hand, you want true happiness, a happiness that doesn't change, that doesn't turn on you. So many times the happinesses or the ways you look for happiness in the world can turn on you. You gain pleasure someplace and then it turns into something other than pleasure. It could be material things and relationships, the work you do. If a happiness changes, it's not dependable. That's the beginning of wisdom, to see that the kind of happiness you want should be a long-term happiness. And you realize it has to depend on your own efforts. This sort of thing doesn't come floating by. At the same time, you realize that if a happiness is going to be true and long-lasting, it can't depend on the suffering of other people. So you want to find a happiness that doesn't take anything away from them. This is why meditation is such a good happiness in that way. It provides a solid happiness inside, and it harms no one. It strengthens the mind. It requires qualities of mindfulness and alertness, concentration, mindfulness, discernment, all of which are good qualities to develop. So the happiness not only lasts while you're sitting here with your eyes closed, but it teaches you the qualities you need to be more dependable in the way you look for happiness in other areas of life as well. Mindfulness is the ability to keep something in mind as you keep remembering to stay with the breath. Alertness is your ability to notice how it actually feels, and also to notice if the mind is really staying with the breath. So each time you catch it wandering off, you bring it right back, and that strengthens the powers of your alertness. Your discernment is what gets developed as you begin to notice what kind of breathing is easy to follow, what kind of breathing is hard to follow, what kind of breathing feels satisfying, what kind of breathing doesn't. And as you strengthen your mindfulness and alertness, your powers of discernment get more and more refined, your concentration gets stronger. The sense of well-being that comes with the meditation gets stronger as well. And at the same time, you're developing good skills to use in other areas of your life. When you have to deal with difficult people, it's good to be mindful, it's good to be alert. It's good to keep your mind centered here in the body. And you'll find that you're more likely to deal in skillful ways with those difficult people. If you have a job that requires keeping lots of different things in mind, okay, your strength and mindfulness will also help. So as you meditate, you're developing a lot of important skills skills for use in daily life, and skills to use when, as you get older, you grow ill. You'll still be able to find happiness inside, even as the body deteriorates, as, the, as your memory begins to go. You find that your mindfulness sticks with you, your alertness sticks with you. It can help you in all sorts of good ways. So you don't identify with things that are going to leave you, or identify with things that are going to cause pain and suffering. That's where the discernment comes in handy. So this is a simple exercise, but it develops all kinds of important qualities in the mind. And as you learn how to use it wisely, you find that you can depend on it more and more. You broaden your range of skills so that even in unlikely and difficult circumstances, the mind can still have a sense of well-being. Realizing that its happiness doesn't need to depend on things outside.
So we've got a whole hour to sit here and work on this skill. Try to make the most of this opportunity. <laughs>